I'm Pastor Drew, and it's great to have you today. If we have any more kids that are in the house, we're inviting them to go with Pastor Liz. She's in the back. If you've got any children, or I guess if you just wanted to be with the kids today, you could go with Pastor Liz. But it's good to have all of you, and it is good to have everyone online this morning as we look at this incredible topic of prayer. We've been talking about 721 keep knocking for the last few weeks. So I just want to want to remind you how important this is as we talk about 721. Do you remember what that is? How many minutes a day? Seven minutes a day. How many insights do we look for? Two. And how many applications for the day? One. 721. And it comes out of Matthew 721 where Jesus said that we need to be faithful to God in our daily walk with him. And that's what this is about. It's about being faithful and praying and allowing God to let our faith grow. And I hope that's what's been happening for you, no matter what your your life's been like lately, is that God is taking even the struggles and he's helping you grow by faith to trust him completely. After all, that's really what the purpose of prayer is about. It's to help us learn how to trust in Jesus. It's like a muscle that we have to work out. Any of you, New Year's resolution, work out, uh, eat less. Okay, look at how excited you are. Well, maybe you shoveled your driveway this morning. Maybe that worked. But we're working this muscle out called trust, and we're wanting it to grow because trust is the foundation of our relationship in prayer with God. But we can struggle with trust, can't we? Turn your attention to the screens and watch this. Jesus, I just don't trust you. You don't trust me? No, I mean, I want to trust you. I just don't. <laughs> I have an exercise that I think will really help you. Oh, okay. Stand here and face this direction. Mm-hmm. Now. Do you trust me? Uh, No, I just said I don't trust you. Well, this is all part of the exercise. All right. Whenever I ask you if you trust me, you say, yes, Jesus, I trust you. Even though I don't. It's practice. Okay. So, do you trust me? Uh, Yes, Jesus, I trust you. Now, fall back. Are you going to catch me? Don't worry about that part. Okay, that's the part I'm worried about. (laughs) You can do this, okay? Just trust me. Trust you. Fall back. Okay, well, Jesus, I trust Good. you. Yes, I do trust you. I'm going to fall okay. back. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's great. Uh, okay. Let's try this again. Just face this direction and keep your feet planted. Okay. All right? Do you trust me? Yes, Jesus, I trust you. Now, fall back. Okay, I'm going to do it. All right. I'm really going to do it. <laughs> okay. Good. Jesus, you really caught me. I didn't think you were going to catch me, but you did. Oh, that was great. That was great. You're ready for level two. Level two, here I come, baby. Woo! Whoa. Whoa. Okay, hold it. Oh, (laughs) you know what? You're too close. You need to move back. Ah, right. Okay. (laughs) This one's a little bit different, Laura. Oh, okay. Uh, Stand here. Uh Uh-huh. But face me. Woo! Forward fall. I can do that. Wait. Whoa. Okay. Um, Wait for my signal. Oh, right. The Jesus signal. Yes, the Jesus signal. (laughs) Do you trust me? Yes, Jesus, I trust you so much. Good. Fall back. (laughs) That's awesome. It is awesome. (laughs) Especially when you do it. (laughs) Seriously? Of course. Okay, Jesus, I don't know if you noticed this, but there is nobody over there. I know it looks that way to you. (laughs) It looks that way. It is that way. You can do this, Laura. Just trust me and fall back. (laughs) Jesus, I can't do that. We can do it together. I can't. You can. I won't. So here's the real question as we move through this incredible story about Bartimaeus. The question to you, the question I have to answer is, where does God want us to trust him? But we're literally saying by our actions No, I won't. 
See, this isn't about trusting Jesus in the areas that are easy. Do you, do you have some easy areas where you trust Jesus? Sure you do. This isn't about that. This is about trusting Jesus in the areas where we're struggling. This isn't about the people you live with. Trust in, trusting in Jesus, keep knocking, praying, isn't about the person you're sitting next to. Trusting Jesus is about getting deep with God and realizing that there are some things that we don't want to do. And yet, we know God wants us to what? Trust Him. Say it with me. He wants us to what? Trust Him. Let's read what's on the screen together. Ready? When we keep knocking in prayer, God is asking us to trust in Him and have the faith to believe that He will do what is best for us no matter what. But the question is, do you believe that, and do I believe that, in the areas that are hard, that we don't want to trust Him, where we're struggling, where we're pushing God away, where we're leaning out instead of leaning in? Where does God want us to trust in Him? In fact, maybe it's an area where you want to trust Him. You want to trust him. You keep praying about it. I keep praying about it. We keep saying, God, I know you can do this. Has anybody ever prayed that prayer? God, I know you can do it. I just need you to do it. Right? And God goes, no, 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 no. I want, I want to do it with you. You just got to trust me. Now, we've been talking about Bartimaeus. I love this story. And I want to do a recap. So let's go to chapter 10 in the book of Mark, verses 46 through 51. Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Powerful passage of scripture. Great insights from this story on prayer. Because that's actually what Bartimaeus did. If you looked at me and you said, but pastor, I don't really see Bartimaeus praying. Oh, he's praying. Because isn't that what prayer is? Calling out to God? Isn't that who he called out to was Jesus? He was praying. The cool thing is, is that Jesus was just right there. And Jesus stopped, and there was this amazing moment where Jesus and Bartimaeus connect as an answer to prayer. And we've learned this so far. The first step that we have to take if we're going to pray is this. Say it with me. Keep knocking and be persistent. That, that's what we've been doing. You got to just keep knocking. You got to be persistent. Don't give up, especially when you want to. When it's a struggle or when God asks us to do exactly what he wants and not what we want. Now, here was the second step we learned. Say it with me. Keep knocking and be bold. Keep knocking and be bold. That was Bartimaeus. Jesus is coming. I'm going to stop him. Now he's blind. He's sitting on some kind of a cloak. He throws it away. The most valuable possession that he had was his cloak. He got rid of it. And Jesus said, call him. Now Jesus knew exactly what Bartimaeus wanted. He wanted to see but it didn't stop Jesus from asking the question, why? 
Because Jesus wants us to trust him. What does Jesus want us to do? Trust him. He already knew Bartimaeus' heart. Guess what? He knows your heart too. He knows what you want. The question is, are we really ready to trust him? And that leads to one verse and the third step of prayer. Let's read the verse first, Mark 10, 52. Will you read it with me? Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Here's our third step of prayer. Let's say it together. Keep knocking and be faithful. See, that's what knocking is. Knocking is, I'm not going to stop. See, if you and I stop, we can't be faithful. We, we've, we've stopped trusting. But we have to keep knocking no matter what. And we have to believe that the more that we knock, the more that we ask, the more that we seek, then we will find God. Because there are some things, hang on church, there are some things that we need Jesus to do for us that aren't going to happen with a snap of a finger. Anybody in the house? Amen? Come on. You've got to sound louder. There's fewer. Okay? See, God wants us to be transformed, not just our circumstances. He isn't looking just to transform your circumstances. Jesus wants to transform us, and as he transforms us, our circumstances are changed. Now, how do you keep knocking and be faithful? I, I love this story because Jesus has asked Bartimaeus a question. He has said to Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And this is what I think had started to happen. I think there was a stirring of faith in Bartimaeus' heart and mind. Do, do you understand that step? This is crucial. When we start really talking to Jesus and we get serious like Bartimaeus did, and that can happen at any moment. When you and I really get serious and start talking to Jesus, Jesus begins to stir things in our hearts and in our minds. He begins to help our faith grow as we are, are getting closer to him. This is what so many people can't understand about prayer. They, they want to pray for things and have God answer a prayer, but in, in the times where uh, things are good, right, or the times that things are going the way we want them to, we're not really leaning into God. But see, God wants us to lean in, to keep knocking and be faithful. And trust is the key for this faith to keep, to, to keep growing. God is stirring, right now, God is stirring something in your hearts right now. You have dreams, you have hopes, you're praying for things, there's healing. God is stirring some things in your heart right now. The question is, what are you and I doing to lean in, to really get to know God, and to trust Him so that our faith becomes trust that ultimately is an action step where God is blessing. See, it's not all at once. It's relationship. That's why I think about Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Do you know this verse? Read it with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Wow, do you see it? What's the very first word, church? Trust. In fact, if we were to define trust, if we break it down from the Hebrew, it actually means bold confidence. To have bold confidence in the Lord. Let's look at Hebrews 11.1. 1. Have any of you ever read this incredible verse? This is how it, it, it comes to us originally. This is the translation. Let's read it together. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now, if we were to combine the idea from Proverbs and Hebrews, let's just change one thing that actually is a beautiful way to translate the Greek and look at Hebrews 11, 1 again. Let's read it. Now, faith is bold, confident trust in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Man, I want to challenge you this morning. Where have you prayed before with bold, confident trust, and you've seen God answer prayer? Has anybody got that in the room? Amen. 
Have you seen it before? Man, I can look back in my life and I can see time and time again where I have prayed with bold, confident trust and God has answered my prayers. He's answered it in healing for my daughter, Melissa. He's answered it in relationships in whom my children have married. He's answered it in jobs. He's answered it in ministry in the church. Man, he answered it this week because the cove is going to open. Man, that was hard. I got whiny. Do any of you ever whine and complain when God doesn't show up when you want him to? Now, are we having church or not this morning? What's the third prayer step? Say it with me. Keep knocking and be faithful. Let trust grow in Jesus Christ. And we need to understand this. If you're new in your walk with Jesus, this is beautiful. I'm glad you're here. I'm so excited about it. That's awesome. I love watching new believers trust in Jesus. They just get so excited. They're so willing to do that because they realize that you're putting faith and trust in God. But you know, some of us have been walking with Jesus for quite a long time. You would think it would be easier for us to have trust. You would think it would be easier after all the answers to prayer that we've had that we would lean into God. But when the hardest things happen, so often we don't lean in, we lean out, and we're so full of doubt, and we know better. We know better. Because we've seen God work in all the ways we want him to? No. No. There are disappointments and struggles. But we're seeing Jesus Christ work in incredible ways by putting our faith and our trust in him. Right now, some of us in this room have some big things we're praying for, but I have a question. So are you, are you gonna trust Jesus more if you get the big thing you want? Are we going to trust Jesus before we see what the answer is going to be? I would, I would say this to you. I think Bartimaeus had such a stirring of faith in his heart that he started to trust in Jesus before he ever got to him. Okay. Okay. So what do we do? How, how, how do we do this? I'm going to give you three decisions that we have to make on a consistent basis. You know me. I love threes. You know that. There's nothing new about this. If you were to say to me, Pastor, can you do four? You'll just be here longer. And if you say to me, can you do two? I'd feel like I'm sliding you. I'm going to give you three decisions, and I guarantee that if I went down here to my friend Dave on, on the front row, if I went to my friends Dave and Cheryl and I said, do, are these the three decisions, whether you knew it or not, that you constantly use in prayer? I guarantee it would be yes. If I went to my friend Steve and Rose, it would be yes. If I went to Jay and Melissa, it would be yes. If I went to Steve, it would be yes. Whether you know this or not, here are the three decisions in this step to keep knocking and be faithful that we constantly have to make over and over again. Whether we know it or not, this is how this works. And I'm going to challenge you. Do you remember this? In the very first week, I asked you to fill out a card. I asked you to fill out a card the very first week. This is a card that I'm praying over in my life. And I'm praying these three decisions constantly over and over again. I'm going to keep knocking because I'm not concerned about how the answer comes. I'm more concerned that I learn to trust God regardless of the answer. Anybody in the house? Okay, here's the first decision. I'm going to make these simple. Ready? Here it is. This, in fact, let, let's go back. Can we read 1052 again? My guys are like, he's so excited. I am. All right, ready? Let's read it together. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Now, now stop. I, I need you to catch this. We're going to need this. Do it again. Ready? Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. I want, I want your spidey senses to start to tingle. 
Okay, maybe, maybe not too many Marvel fans. Okay, here's what I need. I need you to, to start right now today thinking about where is God working in me and on me? Where is he working in me and where is he working on me? Because I've got this list of things that I'm praying about. Praying for other people, praying for yourself, praying for relationships. That's Bartimaeus. I really believe that God started, remember he's blind. Anybody know the story he's blind? You got that? He's blind. That means all his other senses are coming to life. So he's perceiving every single thing about Jesus. This is interesting. You can write this as a, a note if you're taking notes today. This same story is found in Matthew chapter 20, verses 29 through 34. In that story, there are two men. And the one point in that story that is a beautiful carryover, I love the details in Mark, but one of the pieces is this, is that somehow these blind men, one of them being Bartimaeus, got to Jesus, I don't know, feeling their way, right? The crowd that was against them is now for them. They said, shut up, and then they said, cheer up. Oh, listen, this was last week's message, but if you missed it, stop putting your trust in people because they'll turn on a dime. One minute, some of the folks you know are going to say, shut up, and the next minute, somebody's going to say, cheer up. And I'm not telling you not to love people. Man, can you imagine that? goes all over Facebook and YouTube. Pastor just said, don't love people. I'm not telling you that. I want you to love people. But ultimately, your trust has to be in Jesus Christ. That's the foundation and the source. And I love this about Matthew's passage. He adds to what we're reading in Mark. He says this. He said that when they got to Jesus, Jesus touched them. Now, I want to say this to you. I believe Bartimaeus was already being touched spiritually before Jesus touched him physically. Right now, what, what are you going through? Is it a job change? Is it about your house? Is it family? Is it kids? Do you have ki are you older? Are you like me and you've got kids that you're praying for that you're struggling through? What is God telling you about these situations? Where are your spiritual senses before you ever see it physically, you're perceiving it spiritually? I guarantee that is the first decision that you have made, whether you know it or not, because I have a question. Ready? How many of you ever pray? You know why you pray? To perceive what God wants to do. Isn't that why you pray? You want to know what God wants to do. So you start talking to him. It's an incredible thing. I had a guy say to me one time, I was teaching discipleship, and he goes, Pastor, can I understand this? He said, you seem a little crazy. He actually said that to me. He said, you seem a little crazy. I said, well, if you get to know me, you'll know that's true. And he looked at me and he said, you, you act like, you talk like, talking to God is like talking to your wife. Oh, I said, it's even, it's even more than that. I said, I love talking to Kay. And boy, my spidey senses, senses tingle when I talk to Kay. But I said, when I talk to Jesus, I'm fearfully and wonderfully known. He's my creator. And not only that, he's my savior. I want to challenge some of you in this room. I want to challenge people online today watching. I want, you to, I want to know this. Are you really letting God work in you by trust that you keep knocking by faith, that trust is growing, and you're making the decision to spend time with God to perceive what God wants to do? Now, at some point, we've got to stop talking and start listening. Bartimaeus did a lot of talking and shouting, but when he got to Jesus, can you picture this? Can you see this? And Jesus reached out his hands and touched him. 
Well, listen, Bartimaeus couldn't see, but his sense of touch was through the roof. And it all started with perception. He could see inside by God's grace and power before he could see him face to face. Let me give you the next decision. Are you ready? The first decision is what? Perceive what? By faith. Let's say it. Ready? Perceive by faith. Here's the second decision. Ready? Say it with me. Believe by faith. You got to believe by faith. Now, this is, to me, this is the bridge, okay? Here's the bridge right here. Jesus looks at Bartimaeus and says, go. He's touched him, and he says, go. Well, it doesn't say he saw, and then Jesus said, go. What did he say? It, he touched him, and then he said, what? Go. Start walking by what? Faith. Start walking by what? Faith. Then he was touched. Then he could, immediately, he, was, he could see. Now, you and I need to understand this. This is crucial. God, in, in your areas of struggle, God wants your faith capacity and my faith capacity to grow. But here's the thing. Most of us try to, and I talked about this last week, most of us try to sabotage our prayers with God. You ever do this? Here, here's an example. You have this great time with God perceiving before you ever leave the house, right? It's awesome. You don't want to leave. Anybody ever have a time with God you don't want to leave the house? I don't even want to leave. I don't want to walk away. This is so awesome, right? If I could just stay here. But then you got to go. You, you, you got to see it happen. You got to watch what, this, what God's about to do. You have to have an application. And the minute that we go out somewhere and somebody says, wow, do you think that God can? You fill in the blank. You fill it in. Do you believe God can? And then what do we start to do? Most of us start to say, well, I think he can. Or we start what? Complaining about what? What he hasn't done. And we start making excuses for God. The God you serve doesn't need any excuses. Anybody in the house. God doesn't need any excuses for what he's doing in our lives. Boy, it makes you mad though, doesn't it? Doesn't it make you mad when God doesn't do exactly what you want him to do? Are you okay? How many of you have ever been rubbed the wrong way because you didn't get what you thought God should give you? Come on, raise your hands. Don't be scared. The camera's on me. People aren't taking notes. See, we sabotage prayer. And he, you ready for this? Here it is. We don't really think God's going to do it. We, ju we just don't think it's going to happen. Or it's not going to happen the way I want it to happen. Here's what I love about Bartimaeus. Okay, you could, uh, go ahead. You can give me the argument. You're going to leave church. You're going to chase me down to my truck. I get it. You're going to give me the argument. I know he got to see. Here's what I want you to hear out of this story. Before Bartimaeus could ever see, he had to believe by faith that he was going to. And that's my deepest question. Do you really believe by faith that God can do what you're asking him to do? And I will be honest. I need to be incredibly honest. That can be so hard. Right? Because I've got examples both ways. It's just like the house that we live in over at uh, Oak Ridge. The house that we live in, I, I, Case said that was our house. I didn't want the house. Right? But it had a W on the chimney and God was speaking to her. Okay? Seriously, we drove by the house. She goes, that's going to be our house. I literally said to her, that's going to be your house. I said, I don't want that house. She goes, but honey, it has a W on the chimney. And, and I, this is, she thought it was Wilkerson. I thought it meant, so what? <laughs> I love her. She's, listen, she was what? What's the second decision? What is it? 
believe by what? Faith. She had this incredible, incredible faith. So then the house came on the market. A couple years later, the house came on the market. She looked at me and she goes, honey, that's the W house. And I thought, my so what became wonderful. Wonderful. And so we, we went in, saw it, decided to make an offer on this house. And before we could do anything, the realtor called and said, they've already sold the house. You ever have that happen? I already sold the house. And I thought, well, I was right. <laughs> Kay said, that's our house. It has a W on the chimney. I should have just taken that dumb thing down, right? <laughs> but God, listen, I'm in this story. Kay had perceived by faith that that was going to be our house long before I did. And then God started to stir in me that that was going to be our house. I began to perceive it, and then I began to believe by faith, and we put an offer in, but when the offer was rejected, I looked at her and I said, well, I guess we're done. And the, the mistake I made was praying. Because when I started to pray, God began to really say to me, you're not trusting me for this. Now, we were in a wonderful uh, season of prayer. At the time, we were doing a book called Circle Maker. And God told me, he says, this seriously, I don't know how you talk to God, but this is how God and I talk. God talked to me, and God said, I want you to go over to 5830 Oak Ridge. And the older gentleman that bought the house was selling the house. He was still living in it. And God said, I just want you to circle the house like Jericho. I want you to circle it seven times, praying. So guess what I did? I went in the yard without permission, and I started walking. It was a, it's a pretty big yard and ranch, and, and I start walking. I'm praying for this, and I said, you know, the first three times I'm walking and I'm praying, this is what I'm thinking. God, let, let no one see me and call the police. <laughs> right? Right? I was going to give up. And then I kept walking, and the more I walked, watch, the more I walked, my faith began to grow. And the more my faith grew, I not only perceived it, I began to believe it. And then just three days later, the realtor called and said, the deal fell through, they're willing to take your offer. Man, I love stories like that. All except for the part stalking the house. I'm not crazy about that. But. but remember what I told you just a minute ago. There are some things that are really hard. I've watched how my oldest daughter has gone through so much physically. She's the most courageous woman I know. When I prayed that God would heal her colon, the way he healed it was by removing it. I've watched them struggle to have children I've watched some of you go through the hardest things some of you are still praying for healing I need to be completely honest I don't know what the answer is some of you want relationships mended you've done everything that you can to see children come to Christ. But I'm going to tell you this. Do not stop believing by faith that God can do what he says he'll do. Do not give up. Do not lean out. Lean in. Just when you think things are not going to go the way that you want, and just when you start to give up, you're on that point where you're going to give up. Do not give up. It may not be the way that you want it. There are consequences to sin. Is there anybody in the house? Sometimes we've sabotaged our lives, and then we want God to wave a magic wand. He is not a wizard. He is the almighty God. I don't know if any of you have ever done what I've done, but I've done some stupid things in my life. And thank God I didn't get nailed for all of them. 
But I am telling you this morning, believe by faith that God can do what he says he's going to do. And here's the third decision. Say it with me. Receive by faith. And Bartimaeus was healed. He was healed. And I would, I would tell you, I would, I would argue with any scholar who would say that he was only healed physically, that he wasn't healed spiritually. We'll get into that next week. But I believe his life was completely transformed inwardly before he could see outwardly. And because of that, his life would never, ever be the same. But I had this thought go through my mind. I had this just really weird thought go through my mind as I pre- when I was preparing the message. I thought, what if, what if Bartimaeus had tied a blindfold around his eyes after Jesus healed him? And he started walking around. And somebody said, didn't Jesus heal you? Yeah, he did. Well, just, didn't Jesus touch you? Well, yeah, he did. I can see. Well, then what are you doing with a blindfold on? In fact, I, my mind works in some very strange and mysterious ways. And I got to thinking about this thing on Netflix, Bird Box. Right? Bird Box. I don't know if you've seen it, and I'm not going to promote that. I'm not promoting Bird Box. But if you, if you want to know what the story is on Bird Box, Sandra Bullock is the actress, and the story on Bird Box is, is that there is something, dem- I'm just going to call it demonic, you call it what you want, but there's something demonic. People are committing suicide, and those that live through it, uh, they're trying to kill the people or make them look, you know, and you're not, sub- don't look at it, you know, one of those things. And they want them to look. And, it's, and she's trying to get her kids to safety. It's, an, it's just a weird intense story but of course people are just they can do dumb things agreed and now the bird box challenge has has come about people are tying blindfolds on their eyes and they're doing crazy things i pulled this is just last week 17 year old crashes car while driving with a beanie a blindfold pulled over her eyes as part of the viral bird box challenge. I love what Netflix wrote in response. Netflix tweeted to this challenge earlier this month, can't believe I have to say this, but please do not hurt yourselves with this bird box challenge. Oh, wait a minute. Why do people subscribe to Netflix? Because it's such intelligent TV? Colorado police said in a video, inevitably, somebody's going to do the monumentally stupid thing that is driving while blindfolded. We shouldn't have to say this, but we're going to don't drive blindfolded. Well, and there's a a girl that did it. I, I can't even imagine what her dad was thinking or her mother, right? And I got to be honest with you. I can't believe I have to say this, but you don't have to go through life with a spiritual blindfold on your eyes. Jesus Christ wants to give you sight and set you free. I'm not here critiquing Netflix, but it is incredible how so many people get caught up in things that they think are real. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But here's the good news. If you want a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can have one. And if you keep knocking and you are willing to perceive, what's the first decision? Perceive by faith. What's the second decision? Believe by faith. What's the third decision? Receive by faith. And I have one question for you left. In fact, let's read Oswald. Then I'll ask the question. The most important thing if, for you, so just read it with me. The most important thing for you is to be so closely identified with the Lord Jesus that there is nothing of your old life remaining. Here's the question. Are you ready to trust in Jesus completely? 
this morning as we pray if you're ready to knock and get serious with God and call on the name of Jesus what, the, what a beautiful name it is the beautiful name of Jesus if you have been struggling with something you have been thinking God will not answer this prayer God can't answer it if you've been sabotaging your prayer life if you've been leaning out instead of leaning in today is the day to answer the question and trust in Jesus